Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. I'm always so happy to find you here. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I do plan on posting this on Christmas Eve 2023. So it will be the holiday season's greetings. And I'm so happy to find you here. I am actually following up to my post of uh, yesterday in which I had spoken about my book, self-published books, all three of them, all four of them, actually. Where are we here? On Amazon.com. I'm horrible <laughs> when it comes to marketing and I'm just, I'm no Vanna White. But uh, if you didn't see my video from yesterday, uh, please, please take a look, see, and it talks about the books. It talks about my journey in towards writing them and what uh, encouraged and motivated me to, to do so. And I'm glad that I did. So there you have it. I'm very glad that I did. And I encourage you to pursue any, any ambition that you have, any desire, any dream. I don't really use the word dream because most dreams uh, are either unfulfilled or if they are fulfilled, they never look like what you dreamed. So I just hope that you acquire your intention. I'll put it that way. This particular video, I really am wanting to direct it towards anybody in a position of supervision. Anyone who is a supervisor, lead, manager, director, anyone who has to evaluate another person's performance, Anyone who can make a decision about employees' advancement. Anyone who has a contribution to what a person's career at your company may look like. Anyone involved in the hiring, firing, terminating, separating, however you want to call it, at your company. I'm saying that to say this, <laughs> work often feels like work, not because of the job duties by which you do, but because of the other extensive parts of work, extensive beyond uh, what you have to do, interacting with other, engaging with other, engagement with others, um, discomfort, dis Dis-ease. Dis-ease is not just a dis-ease as we know a person with, but a un discomfort dis-ease is what I'm talking about. And how demotivation occurs at work because of these things. And that a lot of times I have found that employees have learned to what I call seethe. S-E-E-T-H-E, -E -E, seize the situation instead of seize, S-E-I-Z-E, -E, the situation. And when you seize something, you it's seething, it's, it's boiling inside. It will boil inside. It will boil inside. And they've learned to quiet the disarray of the dis-ease that they're having at work. And that makes work slowly but surely over time, dis uncomfortable. Now, I know that it's an imperfect society and we don't go to work just to have fun. I get it. But work to the degree that it should and could occur should be somewhat enjoyable. And the number of times in which we have an encounter that's uncomfortable with another person should be very limited, I say. You achieve that by understanding, not politics, people say, not the brown nosing, people say, not the kissing the bosses, people say, and not even to the degree of knowing how to play the game, people say. Having this understanding of what it is, which it's not any of those things, has become a, an ingredient 
to my overall cookbook of skills, I would say. And it's unique. And the reason it's unique is because it was so hard to discover in the first place. <laughs> I'm serious. It was so hard to discover in the first place. It is not how you play the game. It is not the politics. It is understanding how to have employee etiquette, employee engagement. And that's the missing piece. And I have, I have put many of those right here in my books. I have even put at the very back of my book, the very back of my, because it's so important to me, the whole way of getting along in the workplace with proper etiquette. Now, when I say proper etiquette, I don't mean it like you're at a restaurant and you know which fork to use. When I say proper etiquette, I'm not talking about Miss Manners, when you sneeze, you say a you, and someone says bless you. I'm not, I'm not talking, I'm talking about in employment engagement, employment etiquette, employment ability to exist properly and naturally. That's not trained anymore in the workplace, especially since digitization. They hire a person, set them in front of a computer and click, 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 and expect them to rise up and know how to conduct themselves. Well, that's not what's happening. Res respectfully. So there are three things I am presenting in this talk. One of them is what I was referring to in the back here. My contact is the back. I can go to any employer and identify the problem in their employee base within 30 days. Yes. Yes, I know exactly where you hit it. <laughs> and if you hit it good, I could find it too. Because what the problem is in the employee base is the same problem you employers, you employers I'm talking to, you bosses, you super, this, it's the same problem you didn't address at the root in the first place. You never did. No respectfully. You never addressed it at the root in the first place. This is what the seething is. It's in the basement of the person. You had a talk after talk after talk. You had a write-up after counseling, after coaching, and it's still there. You never fixed it definitively. And maybe it's you. As a, Maybe it's you as a manager, because many times also, so that's part number one, you never fix it at the base. Part number two is it's often the manager. Lack of accountability, lack of follow through, lack of circling back, res respectfully. That's where the, respectfully, it is not always the employees. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's you. We're all imperfect souls. Sometimes it's you. Fix you. And then the third thing is, it's in the employee surveys. They told you what it is. They make comments of what it is. And what did you do? Just like you did with the other issues. You did nothing definitively with it. That's what, that's, see, That's why for me, it's been so important to find a way when I do engage and interact with any level of employee is to let them know I heard you and I will take care of it. Because there's nothing worse than reporting an issue and nothing being done about it. They know you haven't done anything about it. Now, now here's the thing. Uh, let's get close. Here's the thing. I know it sounds almost cocky, but it's not. It's 
Like my grandfather said, it ain't bragging if it's true. I can guarantee, I can go to any employer. I can fix your employee base instantly if you let me get to it. Why? Because you never did it yourself. That's why your employees are unhappy. That's why you have the turnover. That's why you have the same issues. That's why you have the same complaints. That's why they're not going to the uh, employee uh, 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 luncheons. That's why they're calling out sick. That's why they have, that's why you have these issues with attrition. Respectfully, the truth is liberating and it's inconvenient. It's helpful and it's disturbing. It resolves, but it first conflicts. And so I am saying to you, employers, first of all, let's understand one thing. My books have been published for going on five years now. This was the first one in 2018, the second one in 2020, and the third one in 2021. I don't really need to sell the books anymore. They're actually all marked down on Amazon. Buy them for your employees. And certainly for your managers. And let them be training references. I'll come there and train it. <laughs> but let them be training references. Why? Because it tells you in the book, in very plain, like your child, can, your child can read them. In very trained la language, how to have employment etiquette. How to have employment engagement. What's appropriate? How to avoid the pitfall. It, it tells you. Now, can you find that anyplace else? Sure. You don't have to find it here. But have you? No. And that's why you still have the same issues. So that's why. And you're, and by the way, and respectfully, and by the way, employees begin to not fill out their survey. They began to have absenteeism. They began to show you other ways because one, another thing that is very common, when I see an auditor, whatever it is, whether it's financial or whether it's inventory or whether it's, uh, um, whether it's a, 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 a return auditor, whether you work at a retail and it's a store and you're looking at OSHA records, whatever, I have never once heard anyone evaluate, question, or ask about employee satisfaction. And neither do you. That's why. Now, there's a, you know, there's a personnel, but, but Personnel management, human resources, whatever you call it at your company, has become an incubator of problems where the manager should have resolved that problem themselves. So come on, all of this is pointing back to you. If I would say anything for 2024, especially since COVID happened and work has drastically changed, you had better elevate your view and your experience expectation, your engagement, your embrace of your employer, of your employee, or they will exit too. That's what attrition is. And so it's the best, most fruitful offering I can offer you. So there you have it. Okay. So let's see what you do with that. And probably nothing, just like you always have. But therein is the answer, okay? Res respectfully, res respectfully, learn employee engagement and etiquette. When's the last time you took your employee to lunch one-on-one? -on -one? What do you know about them? Especially if they have various different backgrounds, yours. What do you know about the person? This is what this is what I'm saying. So get involved with them. It, make that your goal for make that one of your goal for 2024. You worry about the bottom line. You worry about the revenue sources. You worry you worry about the sales. 
You worry about your bonus. Worry, worry about your people. If you get your people to work and enjoy work, Everything will fall in line, I guarantee you. And if you don't believe me, try it. All right, if you've gotten this far, please click subscribe, bring your friend with you next time. You can find me information in the back of my books. You can find all my books on Amazon. And I love you. Check my About Me page on YouTube and you can find out all my information there. And I love you. Have a wonderful, safe, blessed Christmas, Kwanzaa, um, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. And by the way, Kwanzaa starts the day after Christmas and I will be... Um, re-uploading my videos from last Kwanzaa because the message remains the same. And I love you. Bye. Have a good one. Stay safe.